Kevin Kelly. Now, Larry Merchant, you have been quoted as saying that we are in the midst of a kind of golden era for smaller fighters, lower weight class fighters from the United States. Where in that pantheon of stars does Kevin Kelly fit? Well, I, I look at them as little giants, Jim. And Kevin Kelly is one of those who are golden going on platinum, perhaps. He has the sort of nonstop personality and style that can energize any division. In fact, I fantasize a Kevin Kelly concentrate. You pour some water over him, and voila, you've got a heavyweight everybody can love. <laughs> Speaking of which, everybody may not love Lennox Lewis. I happen to think that right now he's the best heavyweight out there. And if he isn't, why are American heavyweight champions tiptoeing around him as if he were radioactive? Maybe they want to fight Kevin <laughs> Kelly instead and enjoy that 100-pound weight advantage that Lennox was talking about in our opening tonight. Well, we're going to focus on Kelly first, and if you've never heard Kevin Kelly talk, get ready now to be overwhelmed. I'm a people person. I, I just love to talk. I love to be with people. I love to know what's on their mind. And I'm almost like a, a guy that writes or a guy that sings, and he, he wants a, the crowd's reaction. He, he's trying to send a message across. I'm like a messenger. Boxing, to me, is not only a tool I use to do what I want to do with it. He's the P.T. Barnum of boxing, Kevin the Flushing Flash Kelly. His ascension to the top of the featherweight division is a breath of fresh air. Married, father of four, Kelly offers to his kids the same wisdom and insight he gained from his parents. If you were lucky enough to meet Kevin Kelly, you'll never forget him or what he has to say. You guarantee you, gonna, you ain't gonna have to worry about, am I gonna see Kevin Kelly? You're gonna see Kevin Kelly. You're gonna get to meet Kevin Kelly if you have to fight. Because Kevin Kelly's coming right at you. It's gonna be Kevin Mania going wild on you. It's gonna be, it's gonna be intense, it's gonna be immense. I want people to throw Kevin Kelly up when, they, when they're eating. I want them to see my face so much that they're going to know that, that Kevin Kelly exists. Inside comes the Kevin Kelly pencil with Kevin Kelly balloon. Kevin Kelly, Kevin Kelly, Kevin Kelly. We do. We pay for everything. We pay for everything. Home, pockets. Uh, it takes money to make money with them. Yeah. Everybody, everywhere. I, I found out from South Africa to China, I'm big over there. And what I do, I made it my business to make it big there. I make it my business to do my marketing, to, to do my own marketing. I feel that I, I, I can't be contained. I, I have to be free. I have to let go. Once, once in a while, a heavyweight will come along and boxing will grab onto him. So ever since Muhammad Ali, I felt since his era of boxing, he brought a lot of attention to the heavyweights, as Joe Lewis did. Then coming along will be a, a lightweight fighter, which is far superior. And he's really exemplifies what boxing really is. I always felt that if my fights were on a major network and people got a chance to know what Kevin is about, knew my personality, and they knew that, well, he can do the job too, he can fight. I would steal the spotlight from every heavyweight out there. Too many guys wait till they're world champion to do something, or when they're multi-millionaire to do something. It's too late. How y'all doing? I want them guys to use boxing as a tool to, to guide, to, to direct, to inspire, to, to bring focus into other kids' lives. I don't go in there and talk to them about boxing and being a fighter. I talk to them about life. I give them a wake-up call. Like the question I always ask the kids, I always go, who discovered America? Who discovered America? And they say, Christopher Columbus. I tell them, see, you're not thinking. Nobody's thinking. Not let them think. I just teach the kids to think. If I could describe myself, the most happiest guy, I love comedy. Uh, I love to joke around. I, I just love being happy. You're going to have a good day when you get around me. If you hang with me, you're going to have fun. My mother used to say I was a, a, a sympathy sponge. I like all the people that can't do it for themselves. We are here to help each other. Who said am I? Kevin Kelly! God has given me a gift, which most people take for granted. He's given me arms, he's given me a brain. And these tools, I'm gonna make the best of them. In the sport of boxing, it's usually the heavyweights who draw the spotlight. But this featherweight with the enormous heart has a much bigger fight lined up than any you will see in the ring. 
bigger than championship titles, bigger than million dollar paydays. It's a battle he fights with wit, charm, and inspiration, and one from which Kevin will always emerge as champion. I'm a guy that, that is on this planet for one reason, and that's to leave a heavy impression on the people that I touch while I'm here. And that's what Kevin Kelly's story is about. And given the fact that we're about a two and a half hour drive down the Jersey Turnpike from New York City, the crowd tonight is loaded with Kevin Kelly friends, fans, and family members. You can see that he won the WBC featherweight title here on HBO this past December 4 in a terrific fight with Gregorio Vargas, the then reigning champion. Vargas has since moved up in weight to 130 pounds. Kelly now prepares to defend that title for the very first time. Behind him, a crowd of children, members of youth boxing programs from here in the Atlantic City area, will follow him toward the ring. An interesting rivalry is developing, Jim, between the small giants, the little giants from the Southwest and California, and these who are growing up in the East. A couple of weeks ago, we saw one of those Southwesterners, Bam Bam Johnson, upset Junior Jones in the Bantamweight division. And uh, Kevin Kelly's opponent tonight, Benavides, thinks he can do the same thing. In fact, he is a stablemate of Johnson. And there's a powerful connection there because Poison Junior Jones is a very close friend of Kevin Kelly's. They fought for years together at Madison Square Garden. And the young man who upset Jones and lifted his bantamweight title, John Michael Johnson, is trained and managed by the very same people who handle Kelly's challenger tonight, Jesse Benavides. The record for Kevin Kelly, 37-0, 26 knockouts. That is, on paper, the best record of any unbeaten reigning champion presently in the sport. And we mentioned the opponent is a veteran, 30-year-old Jesse Benavides from Corpus Christi, Texas. Spectacular amateur career, three national Golden Gloves championships. He has been close to professional world championships, but hasn't yet gotten one in his best chance. He lost a 12-round battle for the 122-pound championship against Tracy Patterson March of last year. That was his only world championship challenge to date. The record for Jesse Benavides, veteran fighter, a southpaw like Kelly, 37 wins, three losses, one draw, 25 KOs. Like Kevin Kelly, he styles himself a boxer puncher. That is Tony Ayala Sr. rubbing the grease on Jesse Benavides, the same man who carefully trained John Michael Johnson to his stunning upset victory over Kelly's close friend, Poison Junior Jones, two weeks ago in Vegas on the undercard of Moore Holyfield. Tail of the tape, and you can see that Kevin Kelly enjoys a three-inch height advantage and a five-inch reach advantage over Jesse Benavides. Punch that numbers, Larry. Here's a profile of how active these fighters are, and the, and the numbers are remarkably similar, as you can see. And that holds for the number of jabs thrown and landed as well. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Kevin Kelly and Jesse Benavides will box tonight using the rules of the World Boxing Council. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last. Only the referee can stop the fight. And if a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we will go to the scorecards if the three rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. Thank you, Harold. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Atlantic City's Convention Hall here on the famous boardwalk of Atlantic City, New Jersey, where tonight, Main Events Incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Bud Weiser, proud to be your bud, presents World Championship Boxing. This first bout is presented in association with Garden State Boxing. It is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., and the World Boxing Council, WBC Supervisor at Ringside, Mario Latraverse. The three judges assigned to score this bout on a 10-point must system are Malcolm Bullner, Horacio Castilla, 
and Shafiq Rashada. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action working for the 86th time in a world title bout, referee Tony Perez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get things started. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC featherweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks with blue letters and weighing in at 126 pounds. He comes to us tonight from Corpus Christi, Texas and brings an outstanding record of 37 victories, 25 by KO, only three defeats with one draw. He currently holds the NABF Junior Featherweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the challenger, German Jesse Benavides. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing the teal trunks with yellow trim, also weighing an even 126 pounds. His professional record, also outstanding, 37 and 0, 26 by KO. He's from Flushing, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, defending his title for the first time, he is the undefeated WBC featherweight champion of the world, the Flushing Flush, Kevin Kelly. Benavides, I just gave you your instructions before in the dressing room. Two things you must remember. Obey my commands, and most important, protect yourself at all times. Any questions? All right, check hands. Let's do it. Benavides is a good little fighter. He's moving up in weight to the featherweight division. Can he handle a bigger, stronger, younger, and probably quicker champion? Indeed, Jesse Benavides said to us in our meeting yesterday that he was not impressed with Kelly's punching power. Kelly said, he will be when I hit him. Two southpaws facing each other, so George, all of the standard rules that apply to a conventional fighter fighting against a southpaw go out the window here. And you'll open up with the same amount of fear and uncertainties as you would have, as they present to other people. Fear of being on the wrong side. So tonight, each got that fear. Both fighters tend to paw a little bit with the jab. Kelly's is perhaps the sharper of the two, but both use the jab more to set up other punches than as a constant scoring weapon. Kelly has started to initiate and uh, decide that he's going to take the, the aggression. Kelly throwing far more punches at this point than Benavides. We saw him leaping to try to get the left end behind that right jab. Right hook lead by Kelly. Benavides is from that old school of keep your hands up, take some, taste some of his punishment, and then go for the body. So far in the first minute and a half of the bout, it has been mostly Kevin Kelly. He got in one body shot. And now Benavidez starts to try to work to Kelly's ribcage. Kelly with a good right to the body. Evidently, Kelly has been told by his corner, don't back up. On the inner circumstances, keep yourself forward. So even when they're in the clinches, he establishes his right foot forward, doesn't move it backwards. Benavidez said that he expected Kelly to box him. So if Kevin styles himself the aggressor, then Jesse may be a bit surprised by that. And that's what's happening right now as Kelly drives Benavidez into the ropes with a left. Not really a heavy punch, but enough to move Benavides back at that moment. Now Jesse tries to seize the aggressor's role himself. Benavides with a right to the body. And Kelly landed a short left inside, took a right in return from Benavides. 
So both fighters loosening up considerably in the final 30 seconds of round number one. Good round of boxing. Sit down. Come on, stay focused. Nice round of boxing. Good domination. Ready? Deep breath. Chee up for me. Come on, chee up for me. Stay focused here. You go dry. You got this one? Put him in. No keep. Take that. Don't need it. Okay. See his left eye? All right. See his left eye? Yeah. All right, his left eye is really puffy. Okay. And then Stop looking at him. Okay. Don't look at him when you're done. I want instant work. I want that Kevin Kelly speed, and I want that five-inch reach. Okay? I want that Kevin Kelly speed, and that five-inch reach. He's beginning to reach, Mitchell. All right? So you got to get in close so you can get the right right hook in there. Now, sometimes if he gives, the, he gives his hand up, but you have the body so he can bring it down in and up. Heavy hook. You got me. He's nervous, baby. He's nervous. He's nervous. He's nervous. My... Oh, what Tony Aiello said there suggests that perhaps they're trying to spring a trap on Kelly, trying to get him to think he's so dominant that he starts to reach in and then back him up with one good shot and, and change the dynamics of the fight. Well, if they were playing possum in round one, they did a pretty good job of it. Benavides threw only 11 power punches in the round and landed only four. Kelly did at the end of that round start a retreat move, and it, he had to pay for it in the latter part of the round. You gotta stay aggressive. Now Kelly coming forward again behind the jab, and for the moment, landing it effectively. Down goes Kelly off the left hand by Benavides. Four, five, six, Well, there's the classic flash seven, knockdown. Eight. Okay. One punch, what happened, George? Well, he laid a trap, as I was saying. And he came over the right with his own left. And down went Kelly. And now Benavides suddenly flurrying wildly as he tries to follow up on the damage he's done to Kelly. Okay, break it up. Kelly was knocked down in his championship bout with Gregorio Vargas. That was in the ninth round. But he had built up a big lead on points by that time. This is a different story coming in the second round of the fight. going to be all night overhand left by Benavides. You think it'll land, George? No doubt about it. Uh, these guys, when their jab is effective, Kelly's jab is really good when it's effective. When not, it's down by his hip. Solid left hand by Kelly as his comeback continues here in round two. Both fighters having their moments in a wild round two after a very cautious first round. Kelly has done something probably the best thing he's done all night. He's gone to the body once or twice. Benavides with the uppercut. Kelly trying to stay tough and throw back at this point. Kelly's found himself at a disadvantage because he's a boxer. There's no need for a fast, quick boxer like that to be in exchanging punches toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But he's established himself as the aggressor. Now he doesn't know how to get out of that identity. Well, it looks as though he's hung up on a little macho thing here, George, because he wants to take that aggressor's role back from Benavides, particularly since Benavides knocked him down, but he's leaving himself open to Benavides' power punches. That's true, and this is the only way that Benavides can be effective is this, these power exchanges. Now Kelly stepping in behind the jab. Pretty good last minute and a half of the round for Kevin Kelly, but... The knockdown in the first minute belonged to Jesse Benavides. Okay, sit down. Close your eyes. Got killed. Close your eyes. Uh -uh. Right. I didn't give you water. That went in your mouth. I didn't give you that. You all right now? I want his nose wiped out. All right. I got killed. Okay. Look at me. I'm over here. I'll wipe your nose. Come on. Let's work. Keep that. Keep that. Well, let's watch for the trap that Benavides springs here. Right over that lead right hand, the jab, and here you can see it again. Remember, Jim, when when he told us that he was going to muscle up, they did some weight training before this fight because they were expecting something like this, 
here you see Kelly coming back later in the round. The same thing they did with Johnson before he beat Jones. They try to make him stronger with more weight training than his customer. More relaxation. Let me hand it real quick. In the early rounds of Jones versus John Michael Johnson, Poison Jr. Jones's punch stat numbers dwarfed those of Johnson. The tail was somewhat misleading because Jones was expending a lot of energy to reach those numbers. Here, Kelly is flooding Benavides with punch stat numbers, but not necessarily gaining that big an advantage as Benavides again comes in behind the overhand left. That's true. All the young fighters should establish. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna jab, keep that thing out there all the time. When you're resting your jab, keep that right hand up. Don't rest it. Uh, rest from your jab with it down by your hip. But fighters want to look stylish. And stylish fighters like Muhammad Ali and Ray Leonard were able to get away with holding that jab low, right? For a long time. And you can be more effective holding it low if you are backwards, moving backwards. He's trying to be uh, aggressive. Benavides goes to his knees. <coughs> Referee says that one was a slip, not a knockdown. <laughs> Chopping left hands for Kelly Landing. <laughs> You get the feeling Benavides is willing to take punishment to get what he wants. What he wants is another shot at Kelly with his hands down. This is time for corny instructions. Keep that hand up or J up. You got two. Now, when he was knocked down, not only did he get knocked down, his leg was bent underneath him. That hurt. In a lot of rounds, you don't have the bounce that you need to defend yourself if you're the lightweight. Trading punches against the ropes. Benavides pushing Kelly back and coming off the ropes. Kevin throwing the left very hard, missing twice. Good right to the body by Kelly. This drives Benavides back into the ropes. Again they trade. And Benavides has seemed to be the heavier punches. Kelly backs up. <laughs> Kelly's very proud of having won a physical war with Troy, Doyce, Troy Dorsey. He calls it a battle in the trenches. Here he may be falling a little bit too much in love with his chances of using power against Jesse Benavides. Yeah, he's making a powerful mistake slugging it out. He's a good boxer. Why not use that skill? Why not practice for so many years and then waste it? So, still to come tonight, the main event, WBC Heavyweight Championship battle between the other heavyweight champion, Lennox Lewis of Great Britain, and Miami's Phil Jackson, a man with 27 knockouts in 31 bouts. That's yet to come after this Look, WBC you know, featherweight this, championship battle. You're playing, and it's the second round now you got kills. Okay? Remember, that can go that quick. So, you got me? When you're on the inside, I want this hurt like when you hurt me. But what do we do with our shoulders? Put some up, okay? Yes. What do we come back to? Yeah, Phil, the last two legs are too lazy inside. What do we come back to every time? Hello? Chap. In his face. Right, second side. Don't pose. Right now, fellas, I'm thinking of all the champions who have lost their titles in the last six months. Norris, Chavez, Carbajal, Bo, Holyfield, Junior Jones. Unbelievable string of upsets. Kevin Kelly insisted that he had paid attention to that, had it on his mind, was determined not to let it happen to him. Short left inside by Kelly. Another short left by Kelly lands and Benavides backs up. Benavides was able to get a, a little left to the body that hurt Kelly also. 
almost went unnoticed. Kelly he landed that long left hand over the top again, George, just as you said he'd be able to do all night. Kelly should try to reestablish himself as a boxer, bounce a little with the legs, get this guy to come forward to him a little bit. He's been the aggressor too long, it's too much energy, and you can't go 12 rounds like that. Hard right hand by Benavides. And Kelly begins to absorb punishment to the body as he stands against the ropes. Been the aggressor. It takes a lot of energy, 20 miles of road work just to go forward for two rounds. At some point, you go backwards, it's natural for him. And if Benavides had been worried about trying to solve the puzzle of Kevin Kelly's boxing, George, he must regard this as an enormously pleasant surprise. Very pleasant. Kelly is in a house that he's not a, it's a strange house to him. He doesn't need to be in a fight like that. Benavides, everything is going perfectly. I know you don't like weight training for boxers, George. What did you think of Jesse Benavides' statement that eight weeks of weightlifting would be the difference for him here tonight? It makes a, a big difference, but when you're in a lot of weights, you need every bit of speed you can get. Sometimes you get a knockdown, but maybe 10 rounds later before you can get another knockdown because of the weight and the way they stock your shoulders up. So far, it doesn't appear to have hurt Benavides. He's getting more and more fluid as the fight goes on, landing with more and more frequency, or so it appears from here. And he's doing a good job, but I, I would suspect that a good judge would think that uh, Kevin Kelly is a hit on point. I'm not Harry Letterman. Well, you know, how would they score the knockdown round? That's a new question in the sport. <laughs> Four coming to a close. So far, an action brawl between Jesse Benavides and Kevin Kelly. Harold Letterman, how do you have it after four rounds? Larry, 39 37, three rounds to one. Kevin Kelly and a real bond burner. Larry, the punches that hurt you the most are the ones you don't see coming. And the problem with a southpaw is, is that they only give you half the body. They're slanted halfway away from you, and you don't see the left hand coming, and that's what hurt Kevin Kelly in round two. I think Kevin fought back enough to offset a 10-8 round, and it was a 10-9 round, but I think Kelly's got a slight lead. He's out fighting them. I agree. Now, Jesse B. Listen, Jesse I B. I guess that makes us good judges. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Vian. <laughs> Judge Owen. In my wayward youth, gentlemen, I always thought that everybody from featherweight division on down was trying to uh, out Willie Pep, Willie Pep, doing more dancing and fainting than real punching. But that's changed a lot over the last uh, quarter century, uh, especially with the fighters from Mexico and the Mexican-American fighters. They're among the most skilled and the hardest hitting punches in boxing. All right, right. So we know what happened to them. Now, what about your waywardness as a youth? Still there or that changed too? Well, they've, they've convinced me from Michael Carbajal straight up. Kelly chasing Benavides now. As round five begins, Benavides beginning to swell somewhat over the right eye. I can't understand why Kelly's corner is not telling him to get his right hand up. The only thing's happening to him, he's being caught with a lazy jab. Nothing else beyond that. Well, if he does this in the gym every day, George, it's yeah. going to be tough for him to hold it up tonight, right? You're right. You're right. You just can't switch boats sometimes in the middle of the street. Now Kelly switches momentarily to a conventional stance, but doesn't throw a punch out of it. Round five 
slower so far than were rounds three and four. Benavides appearing to take a little bit of a rest here. He's playing counter puncher, which is smart. Wait, he'll leave himself open like Larry said earlier. He said trout. WBC featherweight championship battle. Kevin Kelly, the flushing flash in the green is the title holder. Jesse Benavides in the gold trunks from Corpus Christi, Texas is the challenger. The guys from Texas, they just don't respect the guys from East Coast as tough fighters. They believe they're skillful and slick, but they have a tendency to just run past their power. Benavides sure to have gotten a confidence boost from the victory of his stablemate, John Michael Johnson, over Kevin Kelly, Madison Square Garden stablemate, Poison Junior Jones, two weeks ago. Put me to sleep. Sit down. My boxing, put me to sleep. Look at me. Hey, hey, you spit. Get up. I got a punch of combination. Put me to sleep. Got me? Put me to sleep. You're looking at him, and you're posing. You're not letting four, five, six go, okay? You're just waiting for him to do something. Are you mentally gone tonight? No, I'm just Pick your butt, yo. Pick your butt up and move this guy back. I don't want this guy coming forward. I want him going back. I want the jab in his face. You understand me? Yeah, I'm not landing. Now, That's why I'm not throwing. Who's talking here? You are. You're the man. I want you in his face, and I want you letting your hands go, and I want to see that Kelly speed. I mean, you're not... Very important, Jesse. You got to keep boxing, baby. Okay. Hey. This guy is confused, Jen. This guy is confused now. Stay right there. Stay right there. Tony Ayala, whose voice you just heard, is the father of Tony Ayala Jr., an absolutely great middleweight prospect of a decade ago, sent up to jail 35 years on a rape charge, has four more years to serve. Chanting Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. We told you there was a big contingent of Kelly fans here who made the trip down from New York City. Hey, Kelly's making a big mistake going forward without any head moving. He's going forward, he's not moving his head. Fakes his hands, but he don't fake his head. There's no head movement at all. I'm not even sure it's the right thing to want to go forward all the time. Why wouldn't he want to mix it up a little bit against Benavides if he has an advantage in boxing skill? It's the strangest thing I've seen. Especially when you're the champ. Well, remember, fellas, he's a full-grown, yeah. bigger featherweight, and he's fighting a smaller guy, and he thinks that he naturally should have an edge of power, an edge of ability to take a punch. It may not be. That's exactly right. That's missing out. Kelly with a good short right hand inside. Stop that Benavides flurry. <laughs> Kelly is moving from side to side as he delivers punches and he's going to the body. Which is what his corner told him to do earlier. This has been a good round for Kevin Kelly. He's mixed in combinations well here and has dominated the action in round six. That right to the body a minute ago hurt. Two men more of those, and we'll see a knockdown. Benavides lashes off the ropes with a couple of punches, but for a moment there he was dormant after the right hand of the body that George talked about. Has that straight left side kind of thing. right on top of that lady shot. Yeah. Chopping left hand over the top by Kelly. Again, a right to the body did some damage. 
is backing up. They trade power shots at close range as round six comes to a close. We're halfway home. Next month, the return of Riddick Bowe, the former heavyweight champion's first fight since his stunning title defeat at the hands of Vander Holyfield last November. Don't miss the comeback. Riddick Bowe against Buster Mathis Jr. Saturday, June 11, live from Las Vegas on HBO. Long deep breath, Long deep breath. Okay. Clean over. Okay. What am I telling you? Stay in my spot and punch. Okay? And move that head. We back the enemy up. We don't back up for the enemy. You got me? Got you. Look at my eyes. I'm with you, Phil. Cheer up for me now. Tony, I'm ready. I want that speed, guys. Cheer it up again. I want that speed. I want that speed, and I want that Kelly Green and that mentality. How do you feel about is extremely tough, an extremely well-schooled fighter. Not easy for Kevin Kelly, no matter what the result is. Sometimes when you're training and everybody's telling you, you fight a small guy. This guy's nothing. The fight goes and you get knocked down, you still don't know how to back away from this guy. He's not that small after all in this fifth. Kelly with a long layoff for him following the title bout against Vargas last December. This is his first time in the ring since then. He had been accustomed to fighting once or twice a month during his long, steady progress under the Madison Square Garden aegis. Benavides has fought sparingly in recent years, and says he'd like to close down shop in a couple of years and go to college. Maybe politics. Yeah, said he might run for office in your state, Texas, George. Maybe you can be a local campaign manager for him. I could do it, no doubt about it. Short right hand inside by Kelly, landed flush. Now he drives Benavides into the corner again with body punching. Right in his face, his corner told him, and it seems that's what he's doing. He's staying right in Benavides' ben face. Kelly is being an aggressor, and he's work it's starting to work out for him a little better now. Kevin landing a lot of punches these last couple rounds. Benavides' his face beginning to show the effects. In case you've just joined us, we're in the seventh round of the WBC World Featherweight Championship fight. One minute to go in the round. Kevin Kelly, the champion in the green trunks, fighting Jesse Benavides. An outstanding amateur fighter and a good pro who's never held a world title. He's in the yellow trunks. Benavides knocked Kelly down in the second round of this fight. But in terms of number of punches thrown and number of punches landed, it's been mostly Kelly. Now here comes Benavides again with some body punching of his own. Short left hands turn things around for Kelly. He pins Benavides against the ropes. through seven rounds, both men having their moments. Kevin Kelly having just a few more of them than Jesse Benavides. Benavides is finding it very hot in Kelly's kitchen, but he stays right in it. I'm waiting for you to sit. Forget about everybody out there. Knock me up. You're doing fine. Now you're in your mobile. Harold Letterman, seven rounds. Your score. Larry, 69, 64, six rounds to one. 
Kevin Kelly. Larry, take a look at Jesse Benavides' mouth for the past three rounds. It's wide open. He's breathing really, really hard. He looks tired. Kevin Kelly's leaning on him and backing him up constantly. It's Ron effective Ed, aggressiveness. Busier, cleaner punching by Kevin Kelly. When a guy's tired, he can't fight. I have it five rounds to two. I thought that Benavides won the fifth round. Lo que pasa es que estás brincando mucho, no brinque mucho. Quédate cortito, que así nada. Voy a ir right here, de izquierda y luego el foco. Round eight of the scheduled 12. Referee Tony Perez signaling the two fighters towards the center of the ring. Perez has been out of sight and out of mind in this fight. You look in the background just behind the fighters there. Slipping out of the right side of your screen, the new WBA and IBF World Heavyweight Champion in the shiny shades, Michael Moore. Here to watch Lennox Lewis later on tonight. Much of the boxing world hoping that the two can get together at some point for a title unification bout. Kelly is, is catching the straight lefts all night. The hooks, the right hooks are missing him all night. Tells you something. Tells you what? He hasn't prepared properly for this fight. Win, lose, or draw. You've got to prepare it if you want to keep yourself unhurt. This they trade punches in the center of the ring. Benavides matching his strength against Kelly's quickness. In a heavyweight, sometimes you, you make up for mistakes because you get a knockout as a treat. But in the lighter weights, the knockouts don't come. Round after round, you keep getting hit with the same shots. as they trade punches again. Chest to chest. Not the kind of fight you would have expected to see from Kevin Kelly, but he has chosen to do it. Almost certainly because, as Larry Merchant said, he thinks of himself as the bigger and stronger man. Correct. Kelly's throwing good you think he's won this round with body punching, George? He's... Ah. Keep him in his fight. You would think that <laughs> Benavides <laughs> would back away to get some living room, but he still wants to stay in the kitchen. Why? Come on, come on. Let me get away. Get it out. You're a drying him out. He's still looking for the knockout. That's why. What got us here, Kelly? Can't speed, okay? Speed. Still to come, WBC World Heavyweight Championship fight. There is the other heavyweight champion, Lennox Lewis, the man who inherited the WBC championship belt when Riddick Bowe dumped it into a garbage can in December of 1992, rather than to honor the WBC's mandate that he fight number one contender Lennox Lewis. This was shortly after Bowe's unanimous decision victory over Evander Holyfield. And Lewis's knockout of Razor Ruddock in the second round two weeks before. George, I saw Lennox Lewis sleeping, literally sleeping about an hour and 15 minutes ago in his dressing room. Did you sleep before you went out on stage? Oh, I've had too much fear. <laughs>
Those are your tense moments, even more so than entering in the ring. That dressing room is the scariest place in the world. And Lennox Lewis now says, incidentally, that one of his big mistakes against Frank Bruno last fall in Cardiff, Wales, was that he didn't warm up properly in his dressing room. So we'll see if he's a little more active tonight. Solid left hand over the top by Benavides. George, you said it would be there all night. Kelly seems to be a little bit wobbly again as Benavides steps in and tries to finish. shots being landed by both fighters here. Benavides appear to have the greater effect. He's really being smart. Waited this guy out, had himself wide open for a knockout. Kelly didn't take advantage of it. Then why not go for a knockout yourself? <laughs> Kelly went to sleep. Now Kelly is trying to fight only because his opponent is initiating the fight. It's the wrong time to fight. You pick the fight when you want to. Benavides talking to Kelly in there now. No doubt telling him that his punch can't crack an egg. <laughs> Kelly remembering to go back to the body for the moment. But he's taken a lot of punishment in this round as Benavides started by landing that overhand left over the top. It's been working for him all night, so he takes a break. Let Kelly waste some punches and come back. You can clip him again. And exertion caused Junior Jones to begin to cave in and gave the opportunity to John Michael Johnson, Benavides' stablemate, to go ahead and take him out of there. Kelly had talked all week about going inside those wide punches of Benavides. He's not doing as much. He's getting a little wide himself. Good point, George. Kevin's punch is not short, straight, and inside the way he predicted, but winging some shots, particularly here in round number nine. Round nine, the best one in a while for Jesse Benavides, but Kelly got in some shots, too. Sit down. Back, my work. Okay. Watch that work. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Nine minutes to go, JB. Nine minutes to go, Mijo. Garraire, Garraire. Garraire, Michucho. Come on, Ops. Are you people, Deep breath, deep breath. Chucho. La doble derecha. Double right. No, that's not. You're not even working. You just got a few squares. That's all. Okay, okay let's go. Here you watch Benavides walk at, watch it, him work against the rope. Beautiful combinations. Body, head, back down to the body, back up to the head. Seconds up. He is a fighter. Tenth round for Jesse Benavides and Kevin Kelly, and you can see that. Benavides is the more experienced fighter going into the deep water of late rounds. Twelve times in his career as opposed to only six for Kevin Kelly. All right, break. Don't lose. Don't lose. Benavides believes that if you hang on tough, the fighter from the East Coast will wither. He's holding on, thinking that in the last couple of rounds, he's going to drop this guy again for good. Well, that's what worked for his buddy Bam Bam Johnson against Poison Jr. Jones. Kelly hasn't boxed all night. He goes straight in. What about the circling? 
jab and move to your left, jab, move to your right. He's just going straight forward, inviting these punches over the top. Well, it's been six months since he fought George and his trainer, Bill no, Borgia, no, no, said no, no, that no, he no, perfectly no, understood no. and accepted that Kevin would take part of that time no, no, to no, 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 no. feed his public make public appearances, do the kinds of things the champions feel themselves entitled to, but you just have a suspicion that the same commitment wasn't there in the gym as was the case before. Yep, especially, especially preparation. You gotta know what your opponent is gonna do to you, where your hands ought to be at all times. Oh, you this that? didn't happen in this fight. There hasn't that? been a proper preparation, only the physical training. How about let's give Benavides some credit for what's happening in there, too. A lot of credit, because his, his trainer is telling him what to do. Go on top. All night he's been successful with it. Why stop now? Well, we're rapidly becoming big Tony Ayala senior fans as a trainer based on the work we've seen in the last couple of weeks. You believe that? I'd like to have a trainer like that in my corner. Maybe you can, George. You're still young. <laughs> the corner of my table. Good, solid right hand shot inside by Benavides. And that punch hurt Kelly. Jesse Benavides getting much busier now in rounds nine and 10. That was the case through the middle portions of the bout. When Kelly gets in close, he switches his legs up. Sometimes I'm, I'm not even sure if he knows where his legs are. He's not doing it as a strategy, but he's almost lost fighting a soft pop. The crowd chanting, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. But Kelly, beginning to look a little bit weary himself, doesn't really deliver with a burst of energy. Goes back to the jab and takes the left hand over the top. Ten rounds, Harold. How do you have it? Larry, eight rounds to two, 98-92, a commanding six-point lead for Kevin Kelly. I still believe that Jesse Benavides is a tired fighter. Got his, he's got his mouth wide open, breathing very, very hard. He can't sustain an attack. It, it's not he's good not conditioning on Jesse Benavides' yeah, part, and I think that's what's killing him. Yeah. Kevin he's Kelly's just not fighting. Him. Well, I think eyes. Kelly has something to do with how Benavides feels about this and how long he can sustain an attack. I have it seven rounds to three. Everything comes off the jab to you. The guy's easy to jab. Look at you got a slip punch, okay? Six more minutes, Joe. Six more minutes, Jesse. Seconds out. Got me. And one that two. Round eleven begins. Benavides with the hungrier look as he comes out of the corner. Would this be a good time, George, for Kevin to revert to his boxing style? No. All night long, he's walked straight in, leaving himself wide open with this lazy jab. Why, why he hasn't boxed, I don't know, but he can establish and recommit himself to being a good boxer. He can pull this off a lot easier than what he's doing now. His jab is effective whenever he uses it. Kelly landing the jab over the top, leaping a little bit. Benavides punching more sparingly now than he did in rounds nine and 10. Hey. Benavides not throwing punches, giving Kelly a chance to set up and throw combinations. Sometimes if Kelly's going to keep leaving that right hand down, he should put his left hand on his right shoulder and just leave it there. Then that way, in case it's down, he'll have an automatic, automatic defense. Another combination landed over the top for Kelly. Now he jabs to the body, continues to stalk Benavides. Oh, hold it, hold it, no question. Benavides, tired, just as Harold Letterman suggested, 
grabs and holds for no particular reason. Less than a minute in round 11, and for the moment it looks as though Jesse Benavides may be trying to save it all up for one big push in the 12th. comes alive a little, sensing that Kelly has a modicum of control here and hoping he'll do something with it. Short left hand lands inside. A lead left hand, which is unusual. Soft Paul doing that to a soft by Kelly. You got to keep your head moving at all times. You just can't go forward moving your hand. With his head still, Kelly took a right hand shot from Benavides. This round has been mostly Kevin Kelly, as Jesse Benavides has suddenly gone dormant again. Benavides' tank looks empty, and I don't see any fuel in his corner. Didn't think we'd be this far. Sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. Yo, he's running. That's why. He's in. How about you, y'all? My left leg. He's trying to rest. Where? Left leg? Oh, yeah, one third leg. He don't try to rest. Hold it. Make him work. Make this all second, mother. Come on, give me my time. Just look, I'm almost cramped up. Here, put the ice pack. Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm telling you. Tell you, I will. 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 Come on, baby. Jesse. Jesse. Get away now, son. Me neither. Okay? Take that. You know why? I tried to hold him. Come on, you're doing all right. Listen to Phil. Come on. Go, Kevin. Take it. I tried to come. He's gonna come with help. Yeah. Nice good luck. Now, I want one little key. He's gonna Make come with. Nice big rest. I got it. I got it. Three, four, five, six. Yeah. Round twelve begins, and by punch stat numbers, Kevin Kelly doubled Jesse Benavides' punch output in round eleven. So let's see if Benavides was able to store up some energy for a 12th round rally. And now, Tony Ayala Sr. with a final word to Jesse Benavides as Tony Perez temporarily holds Kevin Kelly off. Not sure what that was all about. It was a belated, belatedly, he put his mouthpiece in. Kevin Kelly has better, he's got to be careful now. This is it. Good short right hand inside for Kelly as Benavides came in now. Kevin lands another leaping right as Jesse backs up. So the first flurry of the 12th round belongs to Kelly. Now let's see if Benavides is playing possum and inviting Kelly to come in and be aggressive again in the hopes of getting off that one clean shot. That's what he's doing. His corner believes in traps, and if it takes the 12th round, he'll go for another trap. getting what he wants from Kelly because Kevin is extending his arms and throwing long looping shots here. If Benavides can step up and land one good one, he may turn the tide. Kelly with a hard left hand. Those are the combinations the crowd has been expecting to see from Kelly all night. Benavides tried for the right and missed. Kevin Kelly punishes him with five or six punches in a row. Benavides has been a boxer since he was 10 years old, 10 years as a pro. He's never had a job. He's made a living as a boxer. Says he wants to go to college, and right now, he All looks right, like he's fellows, close to matriculating right. because he can't oh, compete now. on this level, it appears, despite a very, very good effort. dominating the 12th so far. More energy, faster hands. Much bigger connect percentage than Jesse Benavides. It's a mark of a good fighter. You're ahead on point, you know you're ahead, but yet you keep fighting. This has been the best round of the bout so far for Kevin Kelly. Benavides tries the left over the top. It was just a little short. seconds for Jesse Benavides to try for the miracle knockout. Kelly doing most of the scoring as the 12th round winds down.
IWGC featherweight title on the line. And the champion tries to finish with first. Pretty good, tough fight. A disciplined effort by Jesse Benavides, who clearly had a plan and came close in the second round to getting it to work like a charm. How'd you see it, George? The thing about having those flash knockdowns and you prepare for them all week, knock the guy down without him expecting it, you gotta have the gas in the tank to finish these fellas off. Sometimes that's the only thing you don't concentrate on. How's this for gas in the tank, George? Kevin Kelly threw 95 punches in the 12th round. That was some energy. Benavides was able to throw only 34 and land only seven. So the 12th round dominated by Kevin Kelly, and that may have eliminated any lingering doubt as to who's most likely to get the decision here. Kevin puts the sweatshirt back over his head that has pictures of all four of his children. Jesse Benavides himself has two children, one of them a three-year-old son of whom he has custody. We asked him if he had any hobbies, and he said, I have a three-year-old son. I don't have much time for hobbies. <laughs> no children will do it. Maybe he could learn to chase cows like you, George. I understand you've been chasing cows the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Final punch stat numbers. And you can see that Kelly threw 124 more punches. Or check it. Landed 124 more punches. And threw 303 more punches by punch stat numbers. Identical percentages, but a much bigger output for Kelly. Jab numbers, and you can see that Kelly was a little bit more active and more dominant there as well, according to punch stat numbers. And now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Horacio Castilla scores the bout, 116 to 112. Shafiq Rashada scores it, 116 to 111. And Judge Boldner scores it, 117 to 111 for the winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated WBC, featherweight champion of the world, the flushing flash, Kevin Kelly. So Kelly gets the unanimous decision by scoring numbers very similar to those you saw earlier from our Harold Letterman here at ringside. And Larry Merchant stands by with the winner. All right, Kevin. Got a little bit of a surprise in the second round. We're going to show it to you. What happened? Did he lay a trap for you and spring it? It was basically that I was, you know, I was, I was too tight for this fight. And uh, I was underestimating his punching power. And like I said, you know, there, like the Vargas fight, I just caught my leg underneath me. It wasn't really the punch that knocked me down. It was just that my leg was out of position to punch. And when he hit me, I just fell off balance, basically. It wasn't that punch that knocked me down. I was more off balance than I was because I was trying to get my footing right, and my leg started clamping up late 11th and 12th round. And I tell you, I got a lot of credit to the guys that gave me work back at home, like Kevin Marston and Danny Acevedo. And well, what about Benavides? Was he, was he more moving up from Bantaway? Was he more than you expected? Were no. you as ready after a long layoff? Well, the layoff did hurt me a little bit. I did feel it in there. You can see my reaction time was a lot slower than it should have been. And uh, I was still picking up the pace. My strength was there. You know, people expect to see the Goya Vargas fight every time they see me. You can't see the Goya Vargas fight unless Kevin Kelly's fighting Goya Vargas. I was fighting another slick lefty that could box, he could stick, he could move. You know, I have a great chin. You can see, you know, it's just that I'm off balance sometimes because my footing, I'm so fast, my brain is moving twice as fast <laughs> as my hand and my feet are. So it's like sometimes my legs get crossed, I get hit with a punch, and I'm trying to still position myself while I'm falling down. So it happens in the gym sometimes. Okay, in, you, in, other, in other words, a good bow fighter needs a good bow. Congratulations, Kevin. Back to ringside. The man who calls himself the children's champion, Kevin Kelly, he says that his brain was moving twice as fast as his hands and his feet. His mouth moves about three times as fast as his brain, so that's real speed. George, if I'm his manager, I get him back in the ring as fast as possible. 
not only that, but properly prepare these guys for these fights. It's not that much of a mystery that what a guy is going to do to you. You got to be prepared in this way. All right, so maybe Kevin Kelly learns a lesson or two en route to a unanimous decision victory in defending his title. We now get ready for the second main event of the evening, and to see it, we move 100 pounds north into the heavyweight division. He has the unique distinction of having obtained his heavyweight title from a trash can, the belt that then champion Riddick Bowe ceremoniously discarded to avoid a mandatory defense against the number one contender, Lennox Lewis. 17 months later, the boxing public and mass media are still unsure of what to make of Lennox Lewis. Is he, in fact, a legitimate heavyweight champion, or is he a champion on paper only, whose claim to the title is fictitious? He won the gold medal in the 1988 Summer Olympics by easily defeating Riddick Bowe. Three years into his professional career, Lewis was not only undefeated, but also untested. As a professional, He's been dining on tomato cans. You know, there's certain amount of opponents that you need to for, for a learning process and to take you through a learning process. So it doesn't do me any good, you know, going in there against uh, good guys that are going to make me look bad. In the fourth year of his professional career, Lewis scored an impressive second round knockout of highly regarded number one contender, Razor Rudder. Right hand by Lewis, Ruddock goes down! Many doubts accompanied Lewis into the ring at Earl's Court but few remained after he dropped Ruddock. Anytime I get a little criticism and uh, I can go in a fight and actually prove them wrong, that makes me feel all the much better as a boxer. Lewis's first title defense was against well-traveled 33-year-old Tony Tucker. Despite two knockdowns of Tucker, Lewis's 12-round performance was judged unimpressive by ringside reporters. The story of the fight wasn't so much that Tony Tucker survived two knockdowns, but that Lennox survived at all. The reputation of the British WBC heavyweight champ took something of a beating in his first defense. I went into the fight with an injury, and uh, to do what I did, knock him down three times, something Tyson couldn't do, uh, really made me feel good. Five months later, Lewis met fellow Englishman Frank Bruno, Britain's most beloved loser. In a spectacle billed as the biggest fight in English history, Lewis was clearly losing until he produced a dramatic seventh round knockout. It was a left hook that turned this around, and a frozen Frank Bruno is there taking punishment. And Mickey Van is going to stop it. For Lewis, it hardly looked invincible. Invincible might be closer to the truth. Frank Bruno has made a lot of boxers look uh, beatable. And uh, Ron Crusher Smith, uh, Tim Weatherspoon, and Mike Tyson, they've all looked beatable. You know, I just go on the same line as them. He holds the WBC title. He has never lost a professional fight. Yet the jury remains undecided. Tonight, you judge for yourself. Lennox Lewis, heavyweight champion. Fact? or fiction. One thing is factual for sure. Tonight, Lennox Lewis defends his WBC heavyweight title against Phil Jackson. For Lewis, an opportunity to prove to the American public that he is more than just a paper champion. And the crowd here, still buzzing over the Kevin Kelly performance, gets ready now to watch the heavyweights enter the ring. A few of them have traveled all the way from London, England to root for their man, Lennox Lewis, first British heavyweight champion in more than 100 years. Now, Larry Merchant, you suggested at the top of the show that the big name American heavyweights have to a large degree been ducking Lennox Lewis. This despite the fact that he is battered in print and by boxing experts here all the time. I'm sure that a lot of the heavyweights would dispute you and say that they're not ducking him, but... Assuming that you're on the money, what is it that they see in him that the experts don't see? Well, first, Jim, let me address the strange phenomenon of American heavyweight champions, what I think are ducking Len Lennox Lewis. I mean, for a century, American heavyweights have been chasing British heavyweights all over the planet, wherever they can find them. It was considered a vacation with pay. Now, whatever Lennox Lewis is, he's not a vacation. He has been belabored for one flaw or another for the chinks in his armor. But it's interesting that the managers and trainers of his potential opponents see that armor as rather formidable. 
they see a big, strong fighter, highly mo motivated, very athletic, and he can take you out with either hand. Now, whether the criticism is just or unjust, it is Lennox Lewis's job to win over the hearts and minds of all the skeptics. Do you ever feel a little bit lonely as the one <laughs> boxing editorialist who seems most given to speaking favorably about Lewis? Well, Jim, sometimes you have to climb out on the limb to see the field. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll learn more tonight about your point of view as opposed to the many others. George Foreman, let's talk about uh, Phil Jackson, the challenger here for a second. This is a guy who has 27 knockouts and 30 wins, but like many fighters in the sport, his career is defined by his one loss. It was a four-round knockout at the hands of Razor Ruddock a couple of years ago in which Jackson freely concedes that he quits. He took a knee in order not to take any more punishment from Ruddock. Now, he says that he's changed and that doesn't mean anything anymore. You tell me, does it mean nothing or does it mean everything? It means everything. You get a reputation as a quitter, it follows you for the rest of your life. He knows now that he's on the spot. He's got to give this fight everything he's got. He's got to, if he's knocked down, he's got to get up four times to prove that he's still a good fighter. That's going to be hard to come by tonight. Well, he comes from the poorest, toughest section of Miami, Overtown. He's got nine children. This is a guy who is hungry for some exposure and some money. Will that hunger produce a big effort here tonight? That hunger could produce a good effort, but let me tell you, it's the wrong thing to be hungry against a puncher like Lennox Lewis. All right. So both men are suggesting that this could be a quick and easy night for Lewis. Meanwhile, our up-close and personal look at Lewis is a bit of a change of pace, a day in the life of Lewis's training camp. Yeah, yeah, I'm up. I'm up. All right. I think I need to keep that right hand up a bit. Now, I figure it's, it's such a nice day that I'll take my bike, you know, just to warm up my legs just before I go into the gym. knock people out with and everybody's worried about my right hand but I got a surprise for them beautiful piece of work. rhythm is going yes rhythm is right first part around just move I don't care if it's no more than three or four seconds move make him look for you a couple of times and then you sit down with your jacket right you gotta know that you can do it My sparring partners are trying to hurt me, so I have to try and stay out of the way of the punches, because they punch hard. Right now, I'm just sitting here and relaxing and trying to calm down, because my heart rate was working at such a high pace up in the ring. I need to calm down just a bit, and this is where I do my sit-ups. Champ, how'd the training go today? It went pretty good. It went really good. I was really impressed in today's uh, workout. As you can see today, I have to take some time with the news media and answer some questions. They wanted to see Lennox Lewis and Bruno, and I think it was a good matchup, not only for the country, for the whole of Europe. I seem to be going against these kind of opponents because I want to become the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Training. A boxer always has to get his beauty sleep, so I have to make sure I get a lot of beauty sleep. I don't need it. Just ask how many times he gets beat. Does it in his sleep? Most of everybody in training camp have to learn how to play chess. Because I like beating up on each one of them every day. It's 
hard work, but you got to do it. Yes! A worm. This is the kind of recreation they allow me to do. One time, I caught a big fish about this big. Well, this big. Yes, after a good long day at the office, training for me, any good Englishman would tell you, there's nothing like a good spot of tea to end the day. Cheers. No spot of tea for Phil Jackson, maybe a little conch soup, as he gets ready for this first championship fight of his career, a late comer to boxing. He was a high school football star from Miami Beach High School, had a couple of minor scrapes with the law. At age 20, he was lured into a boxing gym, wound up having a pretty good amateur career, made it deep into the qualifying for the United States Olympic team in 1988, and then turned professional five years ago. Hasn't had many of those 10 round unanimous decisions. He has one of the highest knockout percentages to be found in any weight class with 27 knockouts in his 31 fights. I remember a heavyweight who was branded a quitter because it seemed that he had quit in a heavyweight championship fight, actually. Then he went on to fight another championship fight. His name was Buster Douglas. And here's the record for Phil Jackson. 30 wins, one loss, no draws, 27 KOs. You can see that he is ranked as the number five contender by the WBC, which originally went to court to try to block this fight, insisting that Lewis should be meeting the number one contender, Oliver McCall. The courts sided in favor of the maintenance of this bout if Lewis agreed to go ahead and fight McCall later on this summer. And now here comes the reigning WBC champion. Last fight, October 1 of 93 in Cardiff, Wales. This will be an entirely different walk to the ring than was the case that night for the Bruno fight. When the temperature was down in the 40s, it was past 1 a.m. and there was a light rain with sleet falling on a canopy above the ring. What he's finding out is that, as all the heavyweight champions have discovered, that you're only as good as your last fight, that every fight is a review, like a Broadway opening of a stage play. And, but the one difference is, is that his reviews are not only bad reviews, but they are followed up by saying he's an imposter, that he really isn't in much as, as a heavyweight champion, and I certainly disagree with that. Larry, would he be treated more favorably by American reporters if he were an American fighter? Well, I don't think anybody is deliberately or consciously putting him down because he's not American, but I do believe that if an American heavyweight had won a bronze and gold medal at the Olympics, if he was undefeated and if he was the most dangerous puncher on the planet, that he might get a little bit more respect. Yet another long stretch of inactivity, as you saw from the graphic leading up to this fight. There's the record, 24 fights, 24 wins, 20 by knockout. And he became the WBC heavyweight champion when Riddick Bowe relinquished the belt in December of 1992, rather than to meet the WBC's mandate that he go ahead and fight Lewis. Nail of the tape, you can see that Lennox Lewis, who weighed 228 in his best effort, his second round knockout of Ruddock, weighed in here at 235, a 17-pound weight advantage over Jackson. He's five inches taller. He's got a five-inch advantage in reach. Heavyweights sometimes tend to step on the scales wearing a lot of clothes, and I thought Lewis, with all the clothing he had on him, that uh, he was probably closer to 230 than 235. Bunch that numbers, Larry. And here's a look at how active they are. Jackson is not active at all, uh, and he's going to have to make the fight here. There you see the jabs. He's going. Jackson is going to have to come through Lewis's big jab to get close to him. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. 
Lennox Lewis and Phil Jackson will box tonight using the rules of the World Boxing Council. 12 rounds, there is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last. Only the referee can stop the fight, and if a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards after three rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. Beautiful, Harold. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Main Events Incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is presented in association with Panics Promotions. It is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board members Gary Shaw and Al Daniels, Chief Physician at Ringside, Dr. Frank B. Doggett, Attending Physicians, Dr. Howard Taylor and Dr. Ken Remsen. The timekeeper is Roosevelt Gilbert, Chief Inspector at Ringside, Sylvester Kyler. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, Council WBC Supervisor John Alati Coffey. The three judges assigned to ringside, scoring the bout on a 10-point must system, are John Kane, Bob Logiste, and John Stewart. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, working for the 113th time in a world title bout, referee Arthur Mercanti. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Atlantic City's Convention Hall here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with gold trim, Weighing in at 218 pounds, he comes to us tonight from Miami, Florida, with a professional record of 30 victories, 27 by KO. Only one defeat. He is ranked number five in the world by the WBC. Tonight, he is a man on a mission. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger, Philip Jackson. the ring fighting out of the red corner wearing the black trunks with red trim weighing in at 235 pounds this 1988 olympic gold medalist as a super heavyweight now is undefeated as a professional his record 24 and 0 20 ko's to his credit he comes to us from east london england ladies and gentlemen presenting the undefeated wbc Heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Good evening, Lennox and Phil. You both know the rules of the WBC. We expect you to obey these rules and I'll enforce them. Shake hands now. Return to your corners. Good luck. Jim Lennox Lewis, like Michael Moore, is intuitively a counter puncher. Like Michael Moore, he's going to have in his last fight when he dethroned Evander Holyfield, he may have to start to make the fight here. Unless Jackson comes at him so strongly that he plays right into his counter puncher. For his part, Jackson said he would be determined to try to make Lewis back up. Lewis expects Jackson to come at him low, much as another opponent, Levi Phillips, did in a fight that went the full 10 rounds. Experts believe that Lewis can be better if he stops holding that left hand out there and pawing with the jab and goes back to throwing it sharply and following it with power punches. There's a right hand and down goes Jackson. We'll find out right quick whether Jackson's going to fight back. Jackson says that in his other big occasion against Razor Ruddock, 
he throws. Here he finally throws a punch. It's a wide winging left hook. He's going to be an easy target, George, if he keeps throwing him like that. Lewis only want to land one good right hand at a time. It seems that Jackson awful confused because Lennox Lewis puts his hands so close to Jackson, yet his body is so far from his hands. So when you throw those hooks afterwards, as Jackson is doing, you miss by a major margin. That over-the-top the right hand Don't diving the down at the fighter as he tries to duck away from the punch is exactly the one that hurt Ruddock and set up the second-round knockout. That's pretty clever what Lewis is doing. He had his hands real close to Jackson, but his body so far away. And there's the ringing right hand again over the top. Now Jackson seems to see where it's coming from anyway. Jackson's supporters claim he should be seen as a very hard puncher. Lewis's detractors don't believe he likes to go in against hard punches. Jackson has got to find his range. Try not to get so close to Lewis's hand. Get close to his body. A first round knockout would look good on the dossier, and Lewis seems to be thinking about it at least a little bit. But he is cautious as well. Smiling now at the wide winging punches of Jackson as he backs away. Good sharp jab by Lennox Lewis. Didn't follow it up. Jackson mostly throwing power punches and missing. Now Lewis begins to stick the jab and it's clearly going to bother Phil Jackson. First round in which Lennox Lewis scored a knockdown of Phil Jackson, but didn't bring a lot of ammunition behind. I'm not pitching. He's in recovery. He's in recovery. In the ball. In the ball. We're going to take it out. Rinse and spit. Let's see that quick. Flash knocked down from that right hand, right behind that left. Cut Jackson right on the point of the chin. Straight right hand. Jackson nodded nice on his way down. Stun, and you're waiting a little bit too much, okay? Right. You're hitting, you've got to jump on it. I want you to come behind the jab. You've got a great jab, but you've got to break on the jab, that power jab. Do you understand? Okay. Stay with the jab, baby. Stay A voice in Jackson's corner, his trainer Pat Burns, a heavily decorated Miami policeman. Lewis's trainer remains Pepe Correa. Correa has been with Lewis since before the Ruddock fight. Came in for a ton of criticism after Lewis's desultory performance in the first six rounds of the Bruno fight this past fall. Lewis has a good jab, but he seems to put his right foot in jail. Once he set that thing down, he's not able to just pick it up and move. You almost have to stay on the ball of your right foot like a track star getting ready to take off. When you lay that thing down as big as those feet are, it's hard to get them up. Jackson's supporters at ringside screaming for him to go in and get closer to Lewis. Easier said than done. George, why doesn't Lewis just snap the jab and dominate with it like that? He's, you know, it's caution first. Sometimes in order to get a good jab, you got to say, hey, I may get caught, but I'm going to hit him. And Lewis is not willing to get hit. 
that because of what Larry describes as his instinct to be a natural counter puncher? That's exactly it. He wants to hit you after you miss him. It's like, I'll hit you, but as soon as you miss me. The counter puncher's temperament is, let me duck first. And then take the easy shot. Yes. Yeah. They're not going to do anything unless they duck first or move backwards. Lewis's jab, the dominant weapon here in round two. Jackson hasn't yet been able to get close enough to Lewis to create some infight. Try to throw him off stride with a little brawling technique. There's a jab from Jackson. His that trainer, Pat Burns, says it's a good one. That's a great thing. If Jackson is able to establish, I can jab you, I think Lennox Lewis could panic. Bruno certainly hurt Lewis with the jab. The taller fellas with the greater reach, they don't like being jabbed. They think something is wrong. Oh, maybe I'm doing wrong. comes to a close around largely dominated by Lennox Lewis's left jab. You can step around more. Okay, now he's only looking for the right jab now, right? Occasionally, drop the hard right hand and he's going to come back with a left hook. Put your punches now right around behind. And as the two corners talk to their respective fighters, we're right. joined here at ringside by the new IBF and WBA World Heavyweight Champion, Michael Moore, champ. Let me be the first to give you a little bit more credit than we managed to give you a couple of weeks ago on a terrific fight plan that paid off in your winning the championship. Thank you very much. Good job with your jab. Does it strike you that Lennox Lewis should be more aggressive in using his? Well, he's using his reach and his height and uh, probably the weight advantage. Um, he's, he's doing the right thing still on the outside. If, if uh, Jackson was smart enough, he'd come inside and take his... Uh, um, arm jab away, you know, just stay on the inside so he doesn't have the uh, pop of his punches. You think the knockdown in the first round was the product of Jackson's nervousness? Probably. It's just great. You know, he, he got over the nervousness. Now he's, uh, he's starting to be a little bit more busier now. Michael Moore referred to by almost all American reporters and some English ones as the real heavyweight champion will now stay with us in round three as Jackson lands his best punch of the fight, a right hand over the top that backed Lewis up. I don't know why Lewis just doesn't want to take any chances. He's making a hard fight, an easy fight hard for himself by not stepping in with that jab. There he jabs twice and throws the right hand over the top. Michael, does Lennox Lewis telegraph that right hand or is it tough to see it coming? He telegraphs a lot. He just, that's the only punch he relies on. He tries to blind the guy with the jab and come over with the right hand. Think of him as someone who would have a lot of trouble with your southpaw style? Uh, you never know until a fight takes place. So I'm not going to say an answer. So you never how know. interested are you in a unification battle? Uh, I'm not interested in it right now. Um, I'm not saying down the road, you know, I just want some time to myself and relax a little bit with my son. I want to, uh, I've been traveling for the last two weeks doing interviews and things. And, and I'm here to look at the fight and have a good time. But um, probably early spring. Uh, we'll probably get it on. Might that be your next defense, or do you lean toward taking another fight first? I'll have to sit down and talk to my manager and trainer and see what they want to do together. We're talking with IBF and WBA World Heavyweight Champion Michael Moore. And Michael, thanks for taking the time to join us. You're welcome. Enjoy the rest of the fight. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Round three, a round in which Phil Jackson finally got on the board and has landed a couple of more blows to Lennox Lewis's head and now misses with a wild right and a wild left, but has become the aggressor a little bit here in round three, George. Lewis, as good a boxer as he is, he's got to stop dropping his hands. A lot of the punches that Jackson, is, he's throwing punches, but he's not looking at what he's doing. You can wind up dropping him with one of those wild shots just because your hands are near your waist. Is he 
doing it, though, to invite Jackson to come in and throw and give him some opportunity. Exactly. He's, he's that counter puncher, but you can't get away with it. This guy is smaller, probably quicker reacting. Lewis again sticking the jab as he did throughout round two. When you're the heavyweight champ of the world, a lot of times you'll, you'll fight guys that you're, more, that you're better than. They seem to give up, but when you're fighting for the title, you'll make a bad fight of good. Well, Jackson's simply excited now after having looked a little bit fearful back in round one. Beautiful round. Beautiful round. And listen now. Nice and suave, everybody. Listen. I want you to start, when you shoot that jab, to crack that hard right hand behind his elbows and come back with the hook for you, right? Okay. Do not stand up straight. As long as you, excuse me one second, as long as you move into your left with your jab, you are taking away his left hook completely. That's all this sucker has is a left hook. All right? Good. Now stay with that jab of yours. Also, when he goes to shoot his... Here's the one good punch that Jackson landed in the fight. The right hand didn't have full power behind it. Body. You had him over here with his hands down, and you didn't work. When you get there, you got to let him go. You understand? Work. Come on, Philip. Let's go. Every once in a while, try this. Let's go Fans want to see the heavyweight champion make the fight, not just take the fight. That's why Lewis has difficulty getting people to success. Lewis, a couple of years ago, was a lot better fighter than he is today. Someone has been trying to show him how to box. Never was a boxer. He's just a good right hand puncher. He would blind you like a man who couldn't see with that left hand, then throw that right. He's not even doing stop that effectively. Holding, stop holding. Back up. Don't hit on a break. Break. Well, there were many experts who suggested after the Bruno fight last fall that Lewis should dump trainer Pepe Correa that the style matchup wasn't working. But Lewis said he was loyal to his guy and was going to stay that way. Well, you can be loyal and keep your trainer, but add another. Bring someone else in. You don't just drop people. Just add another. Right now, he needs someone to re-identify his style with. He's lost. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to move. Does anyone spring to your mind as the right kind of person to bring the aggression back to Lennox's game plan? He's going to have to find that original trainer. Some of the people who were with him in Canada and in his amateur career, get them back into the camp. Let them speak their piece. Certainly the material is there for a devastating punch. He's got it. A lot of what he had has gone. This guy is still one of the best punchers I've ever seen in my life. Don't get on the break. Let's go. Now he's trying to box with his right hand cocked back. Like a guy getting ready to draw his pistol. Good right hand to the body. More of that wouldn't hurt. Wide winging shots by Jackson. Lewis doesn't try to take advantage for a counter. Anytime that Jackson decides to jab twice and throw a right hand, he will drop Lewis. He's only jabbing one jab at a time. Yeah, three jabs and a right to the lower hip. Bring it up hot top and it'll land. Lewis with a good feint, looking down at the body and sticking the jab to the head. Lewis is going to put that left hand down at his hip. Jackson ought to lead with the right hand, right, George? Jackson could do a lot of things if someone would tell him, jab, jab, then do it. Good counter right by Lewis as Jackson tried to come in. Precise punching by the champion, dominating round four. But he remains more the cautious boxer than the evil slug. Breathe and relax. Breathe and relax. Slow it down. Slow it down. Breathe and relax. Okay, okay right. Come behind the jab. 
Okay? Stay with your jab. You're getting there. You got to break on that jab. Step on the jab. You're looking a lot better now, Philip. You understand? Yeah. How you feel? feel good. You're good. You look excellent, Phil. You're getting close and you're still... Continue to circle. You are quicker than he is. You are stronger than he is. And he cannot pick it up. He's catching hell getting past your jab. Keep the jab in his face. Larry, if you don't land punches, you can't win fights. Lennox Lewis is landing all the punches. Phil Jackson's not landing enough. Easy four rounds for Lennox Lewis so far. We agree. You know, while we were trying to analyze Lennox Lewis's style, George, I have a, a category that I put Lewis in. It's what I call a brilliant amateur category. There are some very great amateur fighters who move up to the pros and they have such great bodies, such great reflexes, such great will to win, great conditioning, and they fight first not to get hit and then to use all of their reflexes and other skills to win. I think of Roy Jones, I think of Hector Camacho, even Ali early in his career. He just has such superior stuff and his first thought is, I'm not going to get hit, and I'm going to be able to beat this guy easily. Well, he's getting hit now, as Jackson has landed two right hands in this round. To get Lewis's attention just a little bit, Lewis goes back to the jab and hammers a right hand behind him. And you notice, whenever Lewis lands a right hand, he never throws anything afterwards. It's like that right hand is in jail. You've got to come back with a hook. He says he's proud of his left hook. You just don't see it coming to the body after the right hand lands. American fighters are always taught one, two, three. Finish with the hook. Get your body back in the position to throw another right if you have to. Good body punch. Is this better, Lewis, than we saw against Bruno last fall, or still the same thing? I think even worse. Even Lennox worse. Lewis need to uh, recreate and try to get another trainer to help out Pepe. Pepe is a good trainer, but he needs a, a lot of guy to, to really talk that talk to. You can't talk the same conversation to heavyweights. Footwork, drop your hand, trick. There's no Ray Leonard here. Another right hand to the lower hit by Jackson. No word from Arthur McCann. Good right hand by another Lennox guy. Lewis. Yeah, the overhand right. And for once, he followed it with a left. George, if ever he puts together a right hand and a left hook, we're going to see a different fight. Lewis putting his hands down to invite Jackson in. Jackson does come in, and then Lennox ties him up. Excitement earlier in this round for the anti-Lewis contingent when Lennox reeled against the ropes a little bit, but now the right hand lands, and Jackson is going to be sleepy for a few seconds here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Beats the count. That is the best right hand in boxing right now. and a couple of good ones after the bell and the crowd boots. Knockdown won't count. The bell had already sounded. And you're right, George, it's some right hand when he lands. Yep. That makes up for a lot of frogs, guys. I must say. <laughs> Take a look at the knockdown and what he landed. There was a right on the ear and a delayed reaction. Like a parachute that opens 10 seconds after it comes out of the plane. Harold Letterman, they deducted a point from Lewis for hitting after the bell. Good call? Well, certainly he did hit him after the bell. Referee Arthur McCarthy and again decided to take a point away from it. Phil Jackson was hurt by the punch. I guess he's entitled to do it, no question. And now with the tape flying from Jackson's glove, he'll get a reprieve for a moment Stay here right there. as they hey, rewrap the glove. Come here, I got this it. is a tremendous break for Jackson who gets more time to clear Let's his go. head. Defense. Let's go. And now 
here they'll go with the start of round six. Okay, go! Jackson's still wobbly unless he's playing possum. Lewis not exactly the most graceful finisher in the world. But he's got a lot of leather here. Crowd responds as Lennox takes one in return and suddenly stops punching. Jackson showing some grit. No matter who you're in the ring with, you gotta be a little clean when you try to finish them. You get wild, they're gonna get you too. And that's exactly what happened to Lewis there. Just teeing off with that overhand right. And Jackson takes advantage to land the right of his own. That Jackson has been a football player. He puts those shoulders into those punches. And he can get caught by an accident and drop real quick. Two solid body shots by Jackson. You think Lennox has punched himself out a little bit here? Not only that, if Jackson is able to keep putting those body punches in, you can take a lot of that power from that right hand. You got to get low now. Get the, get your head in his chest. Jackson should get low. Stay low. Go to the body. The uppercut was a howitzer. <laughs> Cuts a good change of pace for Lewis, the way he throws that overhand right all the time. Good, and it hurts. Right now, Lennox is just trying to whack right hands until Jackson goes out of there. Bill Jackson vowed that he wouldn't quit tonight the way he did against Ruddick, and so far, he's been true to his word. Now Lennox smiles as he steps in and loads the right again. time Lennox throws the right, Jackson's trying to get both gloves up around his face. Now Jackson is doing this round what he should have been doing in the earlier round, keeping his head real close to Lennox Lewis' body while Lewis gets well away. But you can't be on the outside, you got to get close. Jackson trying to turn things around with the left hook. Lewis goes back to jabbing. Jackson makes it through round six and seems for the moment to have weathered the fifth round storm. Now settle down completely and listen to this. Listen very carefully. Now, we're going to go back. Look at me. We're going to go back to the jab and we're going to keep this thing in the center of the ring yeah, John. and loosen him up again. Don't try to get him out this round. Take, keep the hands up, okay? When you roll that right hand of his, come back with the hook. His ass is tired too. What round is this? He is tired too. Thank you. Okay? He shot his wad. He shot his wad. You gotta show the heart now. Now, you, you, you keep the hand going. Philip, use that jab. Your left hand is fine, and use your hook when you get close. Hook, hook, hook. Jab and hook. Do you understand? What are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing good, Philip. Body, what you've been working on. He will go down. Go that left foot. Okay, got it. Come on. October 1, round 7, when he rocked Bruno with a left hook and then pounded against him until the referee eventually stopped the fight. Lewis just threw a left hook to the body. Very good left hook. Very good left hook to the body. When you're landing good head shots and the guy's not going down anymore, go back to the body. Set it all up again. Jab from Lewis, left hook from Jackson, followed by another. Tape is wandering down the arm off of Jackson's glove again, and once again, we'll get a brief pause. I want the tape on here. I got it. Let's go. Tremendous. All right, let's go. Offense, Philip. Let's go. Jackson is standing still and fighting Lewis to throw that right got to move your heels, aim that head toward his chest, get it on his chest, and stay there for a while. Oh, that right hand again. This time, Jackson 
takes it for the moment, but his legs are wobbly. Legs in trouble. Lewis is able to just fake that right hand and throw a left hook. He can get a knockout. Yeah, he had him there for a second. A couple left hooks might have done the deal. Now we Another right hand hooks. lands. And another over the top. Legs still wobbly for Jackson. Big opportunity for Lewis if he can find the right key. Don't hit, not a break. Jackson hanging on for dear life here in the seventh, but still throwing to the body from time to time. Come on, let's break when I tell you a break. Thus far, Jackson's proven he's no quitter. There's a left hook after the right hand, and there's a left hook from Jackson that snaps Lewis's head back. to the body from Jackson. Suddenly he's energized. Thinking he's got an opening. His corner told him as soon as you roll that right hand and throw that left hook, he's starting to take that advice. Also, he's taking a lot of punch along with him. All right, break! Step back! Don't hit on a break. A vicious domination by Lewis. Constructed four punch combination and short. Three I'm going to be ready to But I don't want you looking a little more, a little more. Get a deep breath. Get a deep breath and go back in. Bust his ass up some more with the jab. If you step off that back foot hard, you're going to push his head back and make him want to quit. But when you push his head back, come back across with a straight right hand. Got me? When you step off that back foot, the jab is going to move his head back. Come across with the right hand left hook. Now, listen. After taking some stiff punishment from Lewis, there was Jackson's best punch of the fight, a left hook on the chin. And Harold, seven rounds, your score, please. Irish, seven to nothing, 69-61, Lennox Lewis. I gotta discuss the scoring in the fifth round for a minute. Lennox Lewis wins the, wins the round, 10 to eight because of a knockdown. McCarthy subtra subtracts a point. It becomes nine to eight. Lennox Lewis in a fifth round. Punch that numbers in round seven. Lennox Lewis landed 45 out of 67 punches. That's 67 percent. Jab getting sharper for Lewis. He's begun to find the left hook. A little bit of learning on the job here. As soon as Lewis is hit with a jab, he stands flat-footed as if to say, "What did I do wrong?" This is why Jackson should jab. You should jab. If you Jackson's can. too busy eating rights and lefts right now, George. I must agree. A mercy stoppage might not be a bad idea if this gets any worse. Arthur McCanty in his 113th World Championship bout. Bill Jackson's right eye closing rapidly. And his mouth is wide open, so he's not, gonna, he's not able to suck up enough oxygen to give him a, a renewed energy here. This is why it's awful good to be a skilled boxer. When you see a guy hurt like that, get him knocked, get him on out of there. Right hand to the body by Jackson. Lewis resting for a moment. Jackson digging to the body with both hands. Pretty gutty performance. And you consider that the guy took a knee against Razor Ruddock just a couple of years ago. He said he wanted to prove to his son, never give up. He had to be the standard bearer for it. Right hand by Lewis after a couple of uppercuts. Jackson goes down and Mercanti has seen enough. Arthur Mercanti stops the fight. 125 remaining in the eighth, bringing to an end a siege of punishment over the course of the final four rounds of the bout by Lennox Lewis. I thought he looked as good the last several rounds as he looked awkward and, and off center the first few rounds. You agree, George? Yeah, this turned out to be a good fight. Not only because Jackson was willing to mix it up, mix it up, get up and mix it up. He made the fight tonight. Action Jackson. <laughs> Lennox Lewis immediately dons his sunglasses. Well, you know, it's awfully bright here in the Atlantic City Convention Center. Let's take a look now at the final flurry that produced the knockdown. And it was that final left hook starting to come in. 
And I had mentioned about 40 seconds before that a mercy stoppage wouldn't be a bad idea. Clearly, Mercanti was thinking along the same lines, and the that knockout hook. was enough to convince him. There's yes. the left hook. He started throwing that left hook in the last three rounds, and that made a huge difference for it. It finishes off everything you're doing. A good right hand is not good without a left hook. All right, let's get the official particulars on this from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Arthur Mercanti calls a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 35 seconds of round number eight. The winner by TKO victory and still the undefeated WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. applause from the largely American crowd for the English heavyweight champion and there'll be further assessment after this bout as to when and whether Lewis might be ready for a potential title unification bout against Michael Moore that'll be contingent of course on the question of whether Moore can hold on to the championship Lewis was more than ready to fight Riddick Bowe or so he has always said we look at final punch stat numbers and they are a mismatch Lewis landing 247 blows to only 64 for Jackson out of 471 thrown for the first five rounds of the bout with for the first four and a half rounds until Lewis got Jackson in big trouble the overwhelming majority of Lewis's punches were jabs he landed 158 out of 310 more and more power blows in the closing rounds as he added the left hook to that overhand right which was as always for Lewis the most dominant weapon in the bout now Larry Merchant stands by with the WBC heavyweight champ Larry all right Lennox you said coming into this fight that you knew you had to be impressive that you wanted to get credit for being a champion Give us your take on the fight and and how you think you performed. I thought I performed pretty well. You know, I did, did exactly what I wanted I wanted to do. I got my job going. You know, people haven't got the opportunity to see too much of me, so I was showing them a bit of talent, showing them some head movement, some speed, and some body punches. It seemed over the last half of that fight, over the last four rounds, you finally settled down to use your jab. You were having difficulty with it early on. Why was that? Was he just still too fresh at that point? Yeah, he was still too fresh. Uh, I realized uh, after, you know, the rapid head movement, it would slow down for a while, and that's when I would catch him, and I took advantage of that. Was the first knockdown in the first round just a flash knockdown? Were you surprised that he got up so strongly? No, it was a flash knockdown because I realized I looked at his eyes and he still looked fresh. So I still took my time. As you can see, I didn't go after him really fast. I, I knew it was going to be a matter, a matter of time. Talk to us about your plans now. Who would you like to fight What in your big fights coming up? Well, I've got Oliver McCall to sort out, one of Don King's boxes. And eventually I want to become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. You know, I don't think uh, Michael Moore is going to get the respect of the people until he faces Lennox Lewis. So I feel when he turns around and looks in the mirror, he's going to see Lennox Lewis. Do you feel that you haven't gotten the credit you have earned or deserved because you're not an American champion? I feel that uh, I feel that a lot of avid boxing fans realize who my true talent and what kind of talent I have and who the best boxer in the world is. Do you think that this performance will help you in that respect? I feel every performance will help me. This performance is a positive. I went out and I won. I look good doing it, and I feel great. Thank you very much, Lennox Lewis. Big up, Jayut. <laughs> Whatever that means. Jim? All right, thanks very much, Larry. George, you teach a lot of these guys something about boxing, so give Lewis a grade off tonight's performance, A, B, C, or D. Look, Lewis has got to get back and get him an extra trainer in that corner. He's got to have somebody to, he, he reverted back to the old Lennox Lewis to win this fight. It wasn't the old peppy move around jab stuff that got him out of this. Uh, he was in some trouble for a while. Get another trainer to help Pepe out. Don't drop anybody, but let somebody join in. Let me play devil's advocate. Pepe would say to you that he got control of the bout in the fifth, sixth, and seventh, and eighth rounds because he first loosened the guy up with the jab and then followed with power punches. Yeah, but he shouldn't say that. Lewis got hit with a lot of important hard shot, and the crowd got a chance to see the unveiling of a very awkward boxer. 
this it's time for him to now regain the old Lennox Lewis that we saw in the 19 uh, in the Olympics and then early on on HBO. This is a great fighter. I think the best pound for pound heavyweight around. He is the hardest punch I've seen in a long time. So you would pick him at this moment to defeat Michael Moore if they had a heavyweight unification bout? This man hit so hard that I would advise all heavyweights to stay away from him. <laughs> Should put an X on him like you know, no smoke and no Yourself Lennox Lewis. included, right? All right, yep. George, thanks very much. We turn now to Larry Merchant. Your final thoughts, Larry. Well, early on, I said that every heavyweight championship fight, every heavyweight has to go through a process of being judged like the opening of a Broadway show every time. It's not what you did before, it's what you do tonight. And I would say on this that uh, Lennox Lewis had uh, mixed results, not a great first act, but uh, he sure finished, the, uh, finished that show with a flourish, and it was for him a great second act. I thought what we saw was what and who this fighter is. He's big, he's strong, he's determined to win, he's well conditioned, he doesn't like to get hit, that's true, and you may not like a fighter like that, but how do you like the results? He can take your head off with either hand, he has shown that to us, and in the heavyweight division, that armor makes up for a lot of chinks. Yeah, as you said, after the fight in Wales, he's got chinks in his armor, but then again, he's got armor. All right, let's get one more opinion before we close down the evening. The former heavyweight champion of the world, IBF, WBA, and at one time the uh, unified heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield. Evander, first of all, how you feeling? I feel great. You uh, are? Yes. And happy with your new lifestyle? Well, you know, I'm blessed, and what can I say? All right. We wish you the best of luck. We were all, of course, startled to hear about your medical condition and only hope and pray to God that it's going to turn out great for you. You had two fights against Riddick Bowe. You fought Moore two weeks ago. Now you observe Lewis at close range here. Who, in your opinion, is the best heavyweight in the world? Well, it's, uh, it's hard to say because, um, you know, you, uh, it's styles that make fight. And I truly believe that Lennox Lewis is a good fight. Michael Moore is a good fight. It's a two different style. Then you look at Riddick Bowe. Riddick Bowe seemed to have a style that can compare to anybody. So it would be a great fight regardless. If Lewis were to fight against Moore, Moore clearly would try to establish that jab that gave you so much trouble. Would Lewis be able to land that overhand right that seems to be his main weapon? No, I, I don't think so, but you, you never know. I think uh, Michael Moore is uh, more of a defensive boxer, a good counter puncher. And Michael Moore do throw fast combination. He do hit hard. So either way it go, it will be a great fight as I uh, determine it. Uh, uh, the, the individuals are. All right. We'll be looking forward to hearing what you have to say about that later on. How's your son's baseball team doing? Oh, he's doing great. You know, he hit a double. <laughs> All right. Good luck with the coaching. Right now, before we recap the evening here in boxing, a look ahead to what's coming up next on HBO. It's the latest installment of our brand new Friday night talk show entry, Dennis Miller Live. And joining us live from Los Angeles, California, is the host himself, Dennis Miller. Dennis, welcome aboard. What's coming up on the program tonight? Uh, we're going to continue the sports theme, Jimmy. A uh, tough fight there. Looks like Phil Jackson caught more leather than Al Pacino in cruising. Uh, <laughs> Very well done. Nice to, nice to see Evander looking so well. I, I, I think he, in, in history, he's going to look like a lot better in retrospect because he was truly a great champion, I think. A classy guy. It's nice to see he's okay. I was worried about his heart. How you doing? I'm doing well, and uh, we're happy to hear, as we talk about Evander, only the toughest guy of his area, uh, era, that you have the very tough Bob Costas of NBC Sports as your guest tonight. Is that right? Rock and Bobby Costas, Bantamweight out of Ecuador. Uh... Should be there, Bobbin and Weaving. We understand, Dennis, and freely acknowledge from here that sportscasters are now the biggest stars in the galaxy. So we're just happy for you that one of them was available to drop by. Well, thank you, Jimmy. I understand Costas is signed to fight Hume Cronin for the unified belt. So uh... You might want to ask Bob when his next movie role is upcoming. I don't know if you saw Bob's appearance in uh, Ron Howard's The Paper. Have you seen that? I, I saw him in the bathroom. Yeah, that's huge right. Huge penis. Absolutely huge penis. It, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty good thing for Bob that Paula Jones didn't see that movie because we suspect she'd be suing him if she had. <laughs> I'm still recovering from actually saying huge penis on television. <laughs> well, it's cable, Dennis. You know, I mean, I'm not sure that on your oh, old late night penis. talk show. I didn't say cable. <laughs> Well, at any rate, we'll look forward to more fireworks of similar ilk. Any final note you want to offer to the audience before we go away here, Dennis? Uh, tune in. We'll be back. Do we have a few minutes be between shows? How long? 
We got about the 45 feedback. seconds, Dennis. All right, so 45 seconds, we'll be back. We're going to talk about is Frank Merriwell dead? What the hell's happened to the American sports hero with uh, Bobby Costas? So please join us here on the best times on TV, HBO. Oh. Welterweight out of Ecuador. All right, Dennis, thanks very much. Dennis Miller live, coming along next from Los Angeles. You heard him, Bob Costas, the guest. As a member of the sports casting fraternity, I couldn't be more proud of the kind of exposure that Bob's going to earn for all of us tonight. Meanwhile, a look back at what happened here in Atlantic City on this doubleheader night of boxing here on HBO. First, it was Kevin Kelly, the Flushing Flash, defending his WBC World Featherweight Championship in a fight in which he was knocked down early by Jesse Benavides, but came on to pile up points in the later rounds and earn a unanimous decision, 38th win in a row for Kelly. And then it was WBC heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis defending his title with an eighth round technical knockout of outclassed challenger Phil Jackson, a fight in which Lewis piled up huge numbers in punch stat categories against Jackson and ultimately whacked him out of there with the right hand. Coming up immediately following tonight's coverage of World Championship Boxing, stay tuned for Dennis Miller on the East Coast and New Jack City on the West Coast. Next month, the return of Riddick Bowe, the former champion's first fight since his stunning title defeat by Vander Holyfield last November. Don't miss the comeback. Riddick Bowe against Buster Mathis Jr. Saturday, June 11, live here on HBO. So now for Larry Merchant, George Foreman, and Harold Letterman, I'm Jim Lapley saying so long from Atlantic City, New Jersey. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's coverage of World Championship Boxing was produced by Rick Bernstein. And the